Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Hippocrates. In this video, I'll be showing you how to play the game as we actually play it, and I will be showing one out of the game's four overall rounds. Now, I would like to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with great bonuses, like voting on a few of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections in a pinned comment below this video. I'd also like to point out that today I'm filming with a prototype version of the game, so the art and components that you see here will not necessarily match those in the final version. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Thematically, this is set in the time period of Hippocrates, where illness was generally perceived to be a punishment from the gods that needed to be treated with religious practices, as opposed to being treated with medicinal procedures. Now, in this game, each player takes on the role of a physician who has hired a set of doctors who will then try to treat these patients using potions, herbs, and unguments instead of religious practices. Now, as we go through the game, we are going to hire new doctors that will go into our areas, and we will also obtain the necessary materials to perform our procedures. In addition to that, each of the physicians will welcome up to three of these patients into their area each round. And you need to try and treat those patients, because if you don't, they will start to go to the emergency room, and if you don't treat them there, they will pass away and move on to the Hall of Hades, where they will be worth negative points at the end of the game. Now, when you treat these patients, you actually line them up with one of the open contract spots around the doctors, where they match the treatment type, and then you do have to spend the associated resources, in this case, that's two potions and one herb. Once all of these have been treated by doctors who can handle these requirements, then that patient will give that player victory points and flip over to then also give that player reputation. Now, I will describe the details of how this works later on in the tutorial. When we focus back on the board, you may have noticed this set of dice, and these are used to decide which of these patients down here can be welcomed into our physician areas each round, and the order in which we welcome these patients is dictated by this row here. Now the game itself will take place over four full rounds, and I will describe the details of how each of these things work when we bump into them while playing, and on that note, I think it's time to start the game. Now the first thing we do in each round of the game is a welcome phase. The way this works is the player whose token is farthest to the left is going to grab all of these dice and roll them, and it's worth noting that for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the blue player. So that means we roll all of these dice, and there is one die associated with each of these columns down here, each one of them thematically representing different geographical regions. After we've rolled the dice, we now need to associate them with these specific patients in each of these regions. For example, this teal colored die shows a 1 on it, so we put it over here in the teal column on the 1 space. Each of these dice has two sides for the 1, two sides for the 2, and two sides for the 3. So that means that this 3 value green will go down over here, this 1 value dark blue will go there, and likewise we can put the rest of these out next to each of these spots. After the dice have been rolled and placed, we can now move over here to the welcome row, where each player in turn order can welcome one of these patients into their physician area. Now, I did say that we are going to be the blue player, so that means we get the first pick out of all of these patients, but in particular, we can only take patients that have a die next to them, and who do not have a player column on the active spot down here. You'll notice there are two rows. The top is passive and the bottom is active. So that means we can take this and place it onto any of these lower spots, and then we can welcome the patient that is associated with that specific column. So, for example, we could place our column there, and that means this is the patient that we would be taking because that is adjacent to the die in that column. Now, we do have another option available to us, and that comes into play with these assistant tokens. At the beginning of the game, each player started with one of these, and we have this one here, which is the traveling assistant. Now, whenever you are placing your column out, you can use one or more of these assistants to modify which patient you are going to welcome. This traveling assistant would let us take a different assistant on the same row that is associated with the die in the column where we placed our token. So we could use this right now since we have it in order to take this patient instead because they're on the same row. Now the other options are this one, which is the charitable assistant. You can use this one to welcome a different patient from the same column where you placed your token. 
The final of these is the scheduling assistant, and when you use that, it will let you take the patient on the top of the draw deck for that specific column, and then you still gain any benefits of the spot where the die was on the board. Now again, this is the one that we started with, but I'm not sure if we actually want to use this just yet. We do have a bunch of options out here to choose from. Now, I'll go into the specifics of what all of these symbols on the patients mean soon, but now what I'd like to talk about are these symbols down below on the board. Whenever you welcome a patient from this area, you also gain or lose the associated things underneath that spot. For example, if we welcomed this patient, that would gain us to reputation, whereas if we were to welcome this patient over here, that would gain us seven money, but we would lose to reputation. Reputation is important for a couple of reasons, and I'll cover those very soon. Another type of bonus involves simply gaining victory points, like going over here to get one point and a reputation, but in addition to that, another type involves gaining the actual resources that we need to treat these patients. Now, on that note, I think we are going to go way over here, and that means this is the patient that we are going to welcome. That means we either have to welcome this patient, or we could use our traveling assistant to pick up a different one on this row, but I think this is a great patient for us to have. Now, as you can see down below, it says we are going to lose two reputations, so let's do that first. And as you can see, that is tracked up here at the top of the board. We all start at the middle point on this track, so we are going to go backwards two times. That doesn't seem great, but then when we look over here, this says that we are going to gain three herbs. So we can place those into our area, and if we look at the patient that we are welcoming, you'll notice that is the same symbol. That means this patient actually requires three herbs to be treated. So by welcoming this patient, we have gathered everything that we need to actually treat them, although we do of course need a doctor to make that happen. Now these are our starting ingredients. Each player begins with one of each of the types. The blue is potions, the purple is unguments, and the green are herbs. So we can take three more herbs, which means we now have four of them. And now the next thing that happens is when we place our marker in this specific column, we are going to gain an assistant bonus. If you look down here, that symbol matches up with the scheduling assistant. So that means by placing into this column, we now gain this assistant. We can show that we've gained this assistant by taking the token from off of our board, and we can place it onto our board. So we now have two out of the three assistants available for us in future turns. Now, these let us be flexible with the patients that we welcome, and these also can be used at any time to gain two money or one of the associated type of resource. In the case over here of the traveling assistant, that could be spent in order to gain us one potion, and over here, the scheduling assistant could get us one herb if we needed it. When we focus out on the entire patient area, you'll notice that underneath the second, fourth, and sixth column, it shows those assistants. So again, whenever you place your token onto one of those columns, you will then gain the associated assistant unless you already have them on your board, in which case you don't gain any additional benefit. Well, the final thing that we have to do is actually welcome this patient so we can remove them from this area and then place them into our waiting room, where as you can see, there are three different slots. Now, in each one of the game's four rounds, we will welcome up to three patients, and the specific position of these patients in our waiting room does not matter. Now that we have welcomed our patient, we can look back to the passive row and see that the red player can now welcome a patient of their own, and they must choose one of these five columns because our token is blocking the sixth column over here. Now, after considering these options, they're actually going to go right over there into the second column. This means they are going to gain one traveling assistant, which means they could place this onto their board. As you can see during setup, they decided to start with a scheduling assistant, and now they have two assistants in their area. After that, they are going to welcome this patient here, and then they will gain two potions and lose one reputation. So the reputation goes back once, and it's worth noting that if your token goes onto a spot with other players' tokens, you always place it on top of the previous tokens. Next up, they can gain those two potions, and they'll place that patient into their waiting room. Up next, it's now time for the yellow player to welcome a patient, and they've decided to go over here. Now, under normal circumstances, that means they would welcome this patient, but instead, they've decided to use one of their assistants. They decided to start the game with a charitable assistant on their board, so they can use that now to move the die in the column that they selected onto a different patient. In this case, that is the column they chose, so they can move this die to any of the other options, and they're going to go over here, and it's worth noting, you don't actually need to change the face of the die when you use the assistance. Now, this means they will welcome that patient instead, 
and then they will gain one victory point and one reputation. You'll notice that benefit is the same for all spots in this column, but they really wanted this patient instead of that one. It's only going to take two resources to treat them as opposed to four for that patient over there. So they can gain that victory point, which means they go from zero up to one, and then the reputation gain will move them once to the right on this track. Next up, that patient can be placed into their waiting room. Now that yellow has welcomed a patient, we can look back to the passive row where there is another column. Now this is associated with the green player. However, there is no green player in this three player game. Now, even though we just have three players, we still place all of the columns out here. And when we reach a column of a non-player color, then it is also going to try to welcome a guest by discarding it from the board. The way this works is we find each of the columns down here that do not currently have a player token, and then we find the patient with the highest number associated with it that is also next to a die, and that will dictate which column that token goes onto. When we focus in, we can see there is a 41, a 28, and a 70 over here, so that means that 70 is the highest number, and this will be the column where the non-player green token will go. So we can place it right over there, and then this patient will be discarded from the game. Once that token is removed, if there is a reputation change underneath that spot, then the non-player color's reputation token will move accordingly. However, if there are any other bonuses listed, then nothing happens. So in this case, this seven money does nothing. However, the green non-player is going to lose to reputation. You may have noticed this green token over here before, and this is where it starts on the track at the beginning of the game. So it is now going to move two spaces to the left. Well, at this point, there are no more tokens on the passive row of the welcome board. So now what we do is we shift all of these tokens up into that passive row, and it's now time for each of us to welcome another patient. And we are going to do this until we've done three welcome steps total. Now, the first player for this next step gets to roll all of these dice again. So in this case, that would be the yellow player. And then these dice need to once again be placed onto the associated spots down here. It's now time for the leftmost player on the passive row to select a column, and in this case, that is the yellow player. Now, before they actually choose one of these, I would like to point out that some of the spots with dice don't actually have a patient associated with them. Now, if a player goes onto a column with that case, then they can either use an assistant to move the die around to pick up a different patient, or they could simply take the bonus that is printed on the board. Now, this board is old. In the new version of the board, the columns 1, 3, and 5 will give 4 money, and columns 2, 4, and 6 will give 2 money, plus the associated assistant with that column. Now, with regards to these non-player pawns, if all of the optional spots do not have any player tokens on them, then instead you place that pawn into the leftmost open column at that moment, and then you don't remove anything. Now, obviously, if a player goes for one of these spots and it does not take a patient, then they will be taking less than the maximum of three patients in that round. These patients can give victory points and reputation. However, if you don't treat them, then you could actually lose victory points. So sometimes it makes sense to not take the maximum of three. Well, after considering these options, Yellow has decided they would like to go into this first column again, and they do not have any assistance, so they must take this patient. Now that is going to get them one victory point, which brings them up to two, and then they gain one reputation. That will bring them up to this spot, and they are just two reputation behind the non-playing green player. After that, the red player can choose from one of the empty columns, and they're going to go over here. Now they do have a couple of assistants, and the one they've decided to use is this one, which is the scheduling assistant. That lets them take the patient that is on top of the associated columns stack, and they still gain the bonus for the position where the die is. So they've used this assistant, and now they are going to gain one argument, and they will also gain the use of the charitable assistant since they went into the fourth row. So they can place that argument over here, and the charitable assistant will go onto their board, and they still have two assistants that they can use. Next up, the non-player green token is going to go onto one of these empty columns that has the highest value patient, and in that case, it's going to be this column here, because that is patient 63. So this one is discarded, and since there is no reputation change under this spot, we don't have to do anything else with this placement. After that, it's now time for us to choose, and we have these three options. Now, obviously, if we go up here, then we will get the second pick in the third and final welcoming step of this round, or if we went to either of these, then we would have last pick. At the moment, we have these two assistants in front of us, and they are actually associated with two out of our three options out here. Now, if we go onto a column and use one of these assistants, we can actually get it back as long as we are activating on that specific column that is associated with that assistant. 
So we could go over here to use this scheduling assistant to then welcome the patient on the top of the stack, and then we would actually gain this assistant back for a future turn. We could, of course, also go here and just take two money from the spot, and then we would gain the traveling assistant, but we already have that assistant, so we just get the two money. Uh, now, it's possible that's still a good thing to do, to be uh, near the front of the player order for the next draft, and also, we don't necessarily want to take three patients, because we might not be able to fully treat them in this round. If we don't fully treat all of them, then they get sicker, and they could potentially die if we leave them for too many rounds. Well, given all of these options, I think let's actually not use an assistant just yet. Remember, these can turn into money or other resources. And instead, let's just go here and then welcome this patient. That is going to gain us two reputation, which is good considering we lost two reputation with our first welcome action. So we'll go up twice on the track. All of the pawns are on the bottom line, which means we can now move into the third and final welcome phase of the first round, where we can slide all of these up, and then all of the dice can be rolled again. Yellow gets to choose first again, and they've decided to go here. They don't have any assistance, and it looks like they are not interested in bringing on another patient. They are instead going to take this bonus. Now, again, this is going to get them the traveling assistant and then two money. If it's the second, fourth, or sixth column, you get two money plus the associated assistant, whereas if it is the first, third, or fifth column, you get four money. Once again, the numbers printed on the board are from an older version. So they will gain two money and the use of their traveling assistant. Next up, it's time for the non-playing green token to be placed, and it is going to go into this column because that has the highest value patient that is still in an open column. This patient has 58, which is more than the rest, so this will be discarded, and now the red player can choose from these remaining columns. After considering their options, they've decided to welcome this patient here, and that is going to gain them one ungument. That is the third patient that they have welcomed, and now it's time for us to pick again. If we went for this column here, then we would be first to welcome a new patient in the next round of the game. And of course, if we went to here or here, we'd be last to pick the next time it happens. Now, I do like the idea of being at the front of the line instead of the back. So let's go over here. Now, instead of taking this patient here, let's use our traveling assistant to instead move this die to another open spot on this row. We can now place this off to the side of our board, and now we can take this patient here. Uh, that is great because they need a potion, and this spot gains a potion, so this patient has brought what we need to actually treat them. So we can place these into our area, and we have welcomed three patients in this round. Now that we have gone through three of these welcoming steps, we can move on to the final part of this phase, where players will gain the offerings from the patients that they welcomed into their physician's area. These offerings always come in the form of money, and that is printed in the bottom right-hand corner of each of these tiles. That means for us, these three patients are going to get us 17 money total, which we can add to the six money that we started at the beginning of the game. So we now have 23 money total, and this step can be done simultaneously, so let's see what offerings our opponents got. Up here, it looks like red gained 19 money, so we'll give them 20 and put one back into the bank. Lastly, we can see yellow welcomed two patients, and combined, that is going to get them 11 money. So they now have 19 money total. Well, we've now come to the end of the first phase of the round, which brings us to the second phase, where we have to pay all of our doctors. At the start of the game, each player has a single doctor in front of them, and the amount that we have to pay per doctor over here depends on our reputation level. When we focus on this track, you'll notice it is broken up into five overall sections. This middle section here has a three money associated with it, so that means when your reputation token is in this area, you have to spend three money per doctor. If your token is up here into this smaller area, you have to spend two money per doctor, and if it's all the way to the right, you only spend one money each. Of course, if your reputation goes down, you'll have to spend more money to keep these doctors in your employ. If you are down over here, that will cost four money each, and if you're all the way to the left, that will cost five money per doctor. Now, every doctor that you cannot afford to pay is going to be discarded from your area, and any treated patients associated with that doctor will also be discarded, but don't worry about them. You would have already gotten your victory points for them, and I'll explain the details of how that works soon. At the moment, it looks like everyone has to pay three money per doctor, and we all have one doctor in front of us. Now, uh, we could choose not to pay this and then lose that doctor, but I don't think that makes sense. I think in this case, everyone is going to pay the three money. Well, we can now move into the third phase of the round where we can recruit new doctors. Now, this is going to happen in reputation order with the tokens farthest to the right going first, and then we move to the left. If a token is on top of other tokens, then the token on top gets to act before the ones below it. 
when we focus on the track, you can see that the green non-player character is actually farthest to the right. So that means they will get to act first in each of the three steps that are associated with this recruitment phase. Now, the first step involves us optioning one of these region-free doctors that are up at the top of the board. They're called region-free because they are not associated with a specific region as these are down here. But I will tell you that these were drawn randomly from the tops of these during setup, and you'll see how this gets refilled later on in the tutorial. Now, when the non-player character options one of these, they simply take the doctor that has the highest number associated with it, and they discard it from the game. In this case, that is going to be Dr. 25 over here, so this one is removed. After that, we can see that yellow is next highest on this reputation track, so now they can use their option token and place this down onto one of these available doctors at the top of the board. Now, this will cost them two of their money, and then later on during this phase, they could actually hire that doctor for two less money than is indicated on that tile. What this means is the yellow player would effectively be reserving one of these doctors for them to potentially buy later on, but they do have to pay two money to make that reservation that they will not get back if they don't end up recruiting that doctor later on in this round. In this case, they have decided to option Merzad up here, so they are going to spend two of their money to place that token down, and no one else will be able to option this doctor or take them later on in the round. They can take their change back from paying two, and now it looks like we are next to potentially option one of the remaining region-free doctors. In this case, I do think that we should, and I'll explain why we want these doctors and what their benefits are very soon. It is worth noting that we will have another chance in this phase to hire up to one more doctor from down here, but at the moment, these are all face down, so we're not sure exactly what they will show. We can see on the back, though, the types of ingredients that those doctors can use when treating patients. Either way, I do think let's reserve this over here, which means we do have to spend two of our money. After we've done that, the red player now can option the last remaining doctor if they want to, or they could pass and save their money. After considering it, they figure they may as well. This seems like a good doctor to them, so they are going to spend two of their money to do that. Now that each player has had a chance to option one of these region-free doctors at the top, we can move into the second step of this round, where we are going to reveal the top doctor from each of the regions on the board. Next up, in reputation order going from right to left, each player can either recruit a doctor, or they could buy one of these medicine packs, or they could do both in order to gain the knowledge tile that is underneath that column. There is a fourth option where the player can simply pass and not do any of those things, and whether or not you picked any of those four options, you can also choose to recruit a region-free doctor that you optioned earlier on in this phase. In this case, it looks like the non-player green token is still farthest to the right, so it is first to act, and when it goes, it simply finds the doctor with the highest number on it, and it discards that doctor from the game. It appears, in this case, that is going to be Ormazd, because they have the highest number of all of these options currently on the board. Next up, the yellow player can go, and again, their options involve recruiting a face-up doctor, or buying a medical pack, or doing both as a bundle to pick up the knowledge tile underneath. Now there is an extra restriction, and that is that you cannot pick up a medical pack if the doctor above it has been removed, and likewise you cannot recruit a doctor if the medical pack underneath it has been taken. So by doing either of these actions in a column, you effectively remove that column as an option for every other player behind you in reputation order. Before Yellow makes this choice, they need to figure out how much money they could realistically spend. At the moment, they have 14 money over here, and when you are paying for things, you can also move one of your assistants off of your board in the place of two money, as is printed on the back. And remember, each of these assistants is also associated with one of the ingredients. This one could be used as a potion. In this case, they will potentially use this as two money, so that would get them effectively up to 16, and players can also, at any time, discard ingredients to pay two money's worth when making purchases. They have these ingredients over here, which means they could get rid of all three of those to get up to six more buying power if they wanted to. It's also worth noting that at any time, players can spend three money to buy one of these ingredients, and players can also discard a knowledge tile as one of these ingredients, and I'll talk about the knowledge tiles in more detail soon. Now, in this case, they have made their decision, and they are going to go for the bundle. They want to choose this area over here, and again, they could not do that if either the medicine pack or the doctor was already taken from this column. That is not the case over here, though, and when they buy the bundle, they have to spend all of the money associated on each of these tiles. So that is going to be 10 plus 6, or 16 money that they need to spend. In order to pay for this, they will move the assistant off for 2 money, and then discard this 14 money to the bank. 
After paying for the bundle, they will now gain this doctor and they will gain this medical pouch. Realistically, they can discard this after they take this resources. In this case, they will gain one ungument and three herbs. So these can be placed into their area, and now because they bought the bundle, they can take the top knowledge tile associated with this column. There are many different types of these knowledge tiles. This one over here can be immediately used to give five money, and this one over here acts as a patient that they could treat later on in the game that needs two potions in order to be treated. Now, this does not have to go into their waiting room. It can go off to the side of their board. And then they could treat this patient later on to get these five victory points, or they could just discard this in order to act as one of these ingredients. In this case, we'll just have to see what they decide to do later on. Yellow is now done buying that bundle, but remember, if they optioned one of these doctors, they could recruit that doctor now alongside this action. Now, they've already paid two money towards the four money that this doctor would cost to recruit, and currently they don't have any money in front of them, and they have decided to recruit this doctor. That means they need two more money, and they will get it by spending this herb, because remember, any of these ingredients can be returned to pay for two money's worth of a cost when purchasing something. So they can take this tile and then place this alongside all of the other doctors in front of them. Remember, if they did not take this doctor, they would have simply discarded this at the end of the round, and they would have effectively lost that two money. In this case, of course, that two money went towards the cost of the doctor, so that worked out rather well for them. We are next in reputation order, and remember, if we were stacked up with somebody else, then the token on top would go before the tokens underneath it. You just go from the top and down. That is not the case here, though, so we can make this decision. Although, no matter what, I do think we want to option this doctor, so let's just do that first. We've already paid two of the six money that we need, so let's spend four more money, and now we have recruited this doctor. After that, we still have 14 money in front of us, and we can now choose to pass, or buy a medical pack, or recruit another doctor, or buy both as a bundle. Now, at the moment, we can look down here at the patients that we want to treat, and each one tells us which of the ingredients we need to successfully treat them. This patient is going to need three of these herbs. This patient is going to need a potion, as well as two unguments, and we currently only have one, and this patient is going to want a single potion. So right now, we don't have the ungument that we need, but remember, we could discard three of our money to buy one, and up here, it looks like this is associated with herbs, so we cannot actually use that as an ungument. So we could either buy a medical pack that will give us more unguments, or we'll just need to spend three money to buy that. Or, of course, we could just not treat this patient, and they'll slide down into the emergency room later on in this round. So we now have to make this decision, and of course, we could just pass if we wanted to. Technically, we actually have the doctors that we need to treat our patients, and I know I haven't described how that works, but I will get to that soon. Uh, but that being said, if we pass, then we lose out on the opportunity to potentially get a knowledge tile, which could help us out. And also, having more doctors around could help us out in the future. Of course, you do have to pay the doctors every single round that they are in front of you. So uh, recruiting a doctor that we might not use this round does seem like a little bit of a waste of money, but I think let's still go for it, and let's choose this column here. In particular, let's go for a bundle, which means we are going to recruit this doctor and buy this medical pack, because that will get us this knowledge tile, which we could immediately use to increase our reputation three times. And remember, our reputation not only dictates how early we can take these actions in the rounds, but it also dictates how much money we have to spend per doctor, and getting that higher up is definitely going to be a good thing for our wallet. So let's give it a go. This is going to cost 12 plus 4, or 16 of our money. And currently we have 14 money in front of us. So let's spend all of that, and then let's also give up this herb to make up the last two money. We could have, of course, gotten rid of this assistant for the two money, but I like the flexibility of this potentially being a herb, or it could of course be used to help us with a future welcoming phase. So we've recruited this doctor here, and we've also bought this medical pack. That is going to get us one potion, one ungument, and three herbs. These will go in front of us, and then since we bought the bundle, we will take this knowledge tile. Remember, if we bought just the medical pack or just recruited the doctor, we would not gain this tile. Now, in this case, it has a lightning bolt, which means in this moment, we can gain three reputation, or we could hold on to this later on, just keeping it face down in front of us, where it could act as one of any ingredient. Now, that effectively means it's now or never for this three reputation, and I think let's do it. Every single one of these uh, knowledge tokens is a one-time use, so we will gain three reputation, and then this will be discarded. So we can move to the right three times. 
and we are now almost to the two cost area for paying our doctors. We need two more reputation bumps to get there, and we could probably make that happen in the next welcome phase, and there are also ways to gain reputation when we treat our patients, so I think this is certainly doable for us soon. It's now time for Red to go, and they are going to begin things off by recruiting this doctor that they optioned earlier. They've already paid two money, and the recruitment cost is six, so that is going to cost them four more of their money. Now Red can take their action, and they can only choose from these three columns, because all of the other columns have the doctor or the medical tile already removed. After considering their options, they would also like to go for a bundle, and they are going to recruit this doctor for six money, and this medicine pack for 14. So that is going to be 20 money total they have to spend right now. And they currently have 16. So they could spend all of this, and they still need to pay for more. They will pay for two of that with this potion. They can send that back to the supply. And then they will discard another potion for the last two money that they need to pay for this purchase. After that, this medical pack is going to get them two potions, two unguments, as well as two herbs. And it looks like they do now have all of the ingredients they need to treat all of their current patients. So this can be discarded, and since they bought the bundle, they can also take the associated knowledge tile. That was this column here, and this says they can immediately take five money, or they could keep this for the future and use it instead of one other ingredient, and they've decided to take the five money. So this will be discarded, they can add five money into their area, and now they are done with that action. Now that everyone has had a chance to take one of these actions, the second step of this phase is over, and we can move into the third step, where we are going to reset the recruitment zone. The first thing that we do is remove any of these option tokens that are still on a region-free doctor up at the top, which means somebody placed it down, spent the money, but then did not actually recruit that doctor. In this case, we don't have any of those. And the second thing that we do is if there is still a region-free doctor in the far rightmost spot over here, we would remove it. That means if there was a doctor over there instead, then we would not remove any. After that, we will shift any doctors still above the board as far right as possible as we can. And then we will continue to refill the region-free doctor area using the face-up doctors that are still down over here. Now we start on the left and move over to the right. So the way this works is this doctor is going to enter the region-free area and go as far to the right as it can. And then this one is also going to do that, and it will end up over here. Now, if we had more face-up doctors here than we had spots up at the top, then we would continue to remove doctors from the right to slide them down until all of these face-up doctors had made it up to the top. If instead we have a situation where we don't have enough doctors to fill all four of the region-free spots, then we are going to fill this in with these doctors that were set off to the side until we have filled up to four. If we don't have enough, then there might not be four doctors up here, but in this case, there are two tiles off to the side, so we can flip those up and put them into the spots. At this point, the recruitment phase is done, so we can now move into the treatment phase of the game, and this can be done simultaneously with all of the players, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll show each of the players in order. So let's start with ourselves down here. And the way this works is we are now going to take patients and match them up with doctors that can facilitate the correct kind of treatments for their ailments. Each of these patients obviously needs specific resources, but the doctor specialization must also match. Now, as I'm sure you noticed, these doctors have three notches around the outside of their hexagon shape, and some of these notches have these specific ingredients in them. If there is ingredients icons in one of these notches, then that notch is called a contract, and once a doctor has completed all of their contracts, we will then score that doctor for these victory points and then remove them from our area, and that's important because once we score them, we don't have to keep paying their wage. Now we can start things off with this patient here. Obviously they need three of the herbs, and that means we have the herbs available on top of the tile, but we also need a doctor that has a contract associated with at least herbs. Now some of these contracts have multiple icons on them, so if at least one of these was a herb, we could match that up. But as you can see, this is potions and unguments. And the same thing goes for this doctor. We've actually recruited two doctors with the same type of specialty, which maybe wasn't the best idea, but that is what we did. Now over here, our starting doctor has three contracts, and each of them has a single ingredient for each of the three types. Now what that means is we can match up this herb contract with this patient that requires herbs, and that is all that we need. This herb contract icon means that as many herbs as is needed can be administered towards this patient. 
Now, we are only allowed to put this patient here if we have all of the necessary ingredients in order to treat them and if the contract matches up with that. So that means that this patient is fine. But now if we move on to this patient here, we can see that we do have the ingredients and they require potions as well as ungument specialties in order to be treated. Now, in this moment, they need specialization for both of those in order to be treated. So you might think that we could associate this with the unguments over there, and now they just need the potion specialization, which we do have on one of these contracts, so we could put that over there. However, this contract also shows unguments. That means this alone could fully treat that patient, and we would not be allowed to do that because adding this patient to that contract is not necessary, and you're not allowed to add unnecessary doctors just to try and fulfill their contracts. So that means we could put this over here, but we do have another option. We could associate that with this other doctor. It has two of these contracts, whereas this has one though. So I think it makes sense to do that so that we will be done with this doctor and we can score those points later on in this round. Now, at the moment, we do have another patient over here and we don't have to treat all of our patients in our area, but if we can, I do think we should. Now, this patient shows that they need just one potion to be treated. Now that means we could treat this patient by associating them with one of these contracts. That contract could also treat unguments, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the patient that they treat would require unguments to be treated. Now that would of course be somewhat inefficient because we would not be using the other ungument specialty. So I think instead, let's go ahead and have our first doctor also treat this patient. They do have a contract down here associated with just potions, so we can place that patient down over there. And now this doctor is treating both of these patients, that doctor is treating this one, and we have a doctor that we recruited not treating anyone, which might have been a mistake, but we're just going to roll with it. Now, in this moment, it is worth reiterating that if we needed some ingredients that we did not have, we could spend three money each to gain the ingredients, or we could also discard a knowledge tile that's in front of us for one of any ingredient, or we could also use one of our assistants to gain an ingredient of the associated type, so we could get rid of this one to gain one herb, although in this case, we were fine with the ingredients that we gathered earlier on. So we've now treated as many patients as we can, and let's now see how our opponents did. Again, this can all happen simultaneously. Up here in Red's area, they're going to start by treating this patient. That requires one ungument as well as the ungument specialization, and they could take care of that with a contract from this doctor or from their starting doctor, and they've decided to go for their starting doctor. Now, after that, this patient right here requires the single ungument and the herb, as well as those specializations, and those are associated with this doctor here, so they can successfully treat that patient with just that doctor. After that, they have another patient in their waiting room, which requires specialization from all three different ingredients. They have the ingredients that they need, and they can make this treatment happen by associating this treatment with this doctor, which will take care of the unguments as well as the herbs, and then they will take care of the potion specialization by using this doctor over here by slotting that in. Now, just like us, it appears that they have a doctor that they are not using, so maybe that also wasn't a good play for them, but it is also nice to have these around for future planning when they are welcoming more patients into their area. That's finished up the red player's treatment. So let's now look up here to see what yellow did. Now they can put this patient over here because that doctor helps out with potions and herbs, which is exactly what that patient needs. And then this patient here needs the herbs and the unguments. Now they are going to make that happen by associating this over there for the unguments. And then the initial doctor will go over there to treat the herb part of that patient. Technically, the yellow player does have another patient up here. This is a knowledge tile, so they could discard this tile for one of the other ingredients, or they could treat this tile as if it was a patient. Unfortunately for them, this patient needs two potions, and at the moment, they just have a single ungument left. So even though they could have placed this patient over there, they don't actually have the ingredients that they need to treat that patient. They also don't currently have any money to pay for that treatment, so it looks like this is all of the treatment that the yellow player is going to do. Once we've all finished simultaneously treating our patients, we can move into the fifth phase of the round where we are going to score. The first thing that we do is if any players have patients in their emergency room, all of those patients will move down into the Hades area of their board. That means those patients will have passed away, and each patient down there is going to be worth negative three points once the game is over. At this point, no one has any patients in their emergency room, and the next thing that we do is any patients in the waiting rooms will move down into the emergency room. 
Now, there is no difference between patients in either of these rooms when it comes to treating them, but of course, a patient in an emergency room is one step away from dying. Fortunately for all of the players, we were able to treat all of the patients in our waiting rooms, so we don't have to slide any down. So we can move on to the next step, where we are all going to score reputation for our treated patients, and we are going to score this in reputation order. So we start at the right and we move to the left. Uh, green obviously did not treat any because that's not a player, and then we are next. So that means we are now going to gain one reputation for each patient that we successfully treated this round. We can easily count this because those are going to be the patients that are face up over here because again we can only put a patient down over here if we are able to successfully treat them by associating the correct ingredients along with the correct specialization. So it looks like we have three treated patients which means we are going to gain three reputation and that does put us into the two cost area when it comes to paying our doctors in the next round. Of course, we could go back down on this track during the next welcoming phase, but for now, I'm still happy with our reputation position. Next up, the yellow player can score for their treated patients, and they were only able to fully treat two. This means their reputation goes up twice, and they are just barely not in the two-cost area for the doctor wages. After that, red can score their treated patients, and they have three. So they will gain three reputation. After that, each player can simultaneously discharge all of their treated patients. The way this works is we will remove all of these ingredients and put them back into the supply, and then we will gain the victory points showing on each of these patients. So for us, we get 3 plus 2 plus 4, which is 9 victory points total, and then we are going to flip each one of these patients face down to show that they have been discharged. So let's gain 9 victory points. Next up, the red player is going to gain 1 plus 5 plus 2 or 8 victory points, which will bring them up to 8. After that, yellow will get 3 plus 3 or 6 victory points. They already had 2, so that is going to bring them up to 8. After this, it's now time to retire any doctors that have a discharged patient associated with each of their contracts. Over here, we can see our starting doctor had three contracts, and there are two discharged patients, so we do not retire them just yet, but this doctor has just one contract, and it is associated with a discharged patient. That means we can retire this doctor and immediately gain the victory points printed on that tile, so that is going to get us two victory points, and then we can discard all of these from the game. Two points will bring us up to 11. This can happen simultaneously, and up here we can see that the red player has retired this doctor because both of the contracts are completed and there is no contract down here. So that means these can be removed and they will gain four victory points, but of course they will not retire this doctor because there is still one open contract spot there. Four points will bring red up to 12. Finally, yellow can retire doctors, and it's just going to be this one up here. This doctor has another contract and that one has two. So that means they are going to discard these and they will gain two victory points. When they add that to eight, they are now at 10 points total. After that, it's now time for us to reset the welcome area. The first thing that we do is add a single money onto every patient that is still in this area. When a player welcomes a patient that has a money on it as a bribe, then they also gain the bribe. And if a non-player character discards one of these tokens, then the money simply goes right back to the bank. Next up, technically all of these should have been pushed up probably earlier on in this round and we can remove the dice as well. Next up, we have to refill all of these empty spots with tiles from their associated columns and note that we do not move any of the patients that are already out here on the board. The final thing that we have to do is remove all of the face up medical packs from the board and then flip the top tile from each of these stacks face up for the next round of the game. Speaking of the next round, the game is now completely ready to move into the second round of the game. Now, as you can tell over here, some of the players have discharged patients associated with some of the doctors they have in their area. Moving on, players can add more patients to be treated from the contract spots that are empty on those doctors, but players are not allowed to separate out the connections that have already been made. At this point, I am now going to stop playing through the game, and instead let's now discuss how the game ends and where we get points once the game is over. Now the game is going to continue until we have done four full rounds like we've seen so far, so that means at this point the game is one quarter done. Once we have completed all four of those rounds, we will move into end game scoring. The way this works is each player can simultaneously try to treat the patients that they still have in their emergency room. 
Remember, patients over here will have been in the waiting room at the end of the fourth and final round, and then they would have moved down here right before the game was over. Now, during endgame scoring, you can treat these patients without the use of doctors. You simply have to spend the associated resources from your area onto those patients, and you can continue to spend your money to get these resources that you need. And of course, you can use assistance as well as knowledge tiles that you have not used up to this point. If you are able to spend all of the resources needed for a patient in your emergency room, then you will remove that patient from your area. You don't gain any of the victory points on here, but that's important because once you have tried to do this, any patients still remaining in your emergency room will be worth negative one point each, and then you will lose three victory points for every patient that was placed down into the Hades row as the game was being played. Now that is it for endgame scoring, which means you don't actually gain victory points, you just potentially lose them. And note that you do not get anything for any of your excess resources once the game is over, which is again why you want to spend these as much as you can to treat any patients that happen to be in the emergency room to try and not take negative one victory point for each tile that is still there. So, once all players have potentially scored negative victory points, the player who has the most victory points will then be the winner. Now, at this point, I have shown you just about all of the rules to the game, which means this tutorial is coming to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Hippocrates. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.